Hello and welcome to this session. In our previous session, with the help of Mikado sticks, we learned the condition under which a parallelogram is called a rectangle, rhombus, and square. Friends, what is the use of understanding all different shapes or doing any kind of mathematical operation when and where it helps us? Friends, playing with these things actually sharpen our mind and also improve the basic knowledge which helps us understanding complicated things easily in future. As we apply logic in our own way on different subjects or topics, it sharpens our brain and we start thinking more logically and beautifully. So let's while watching the session, think, question and stay curious. Now on throwing these Mikado sticks, we see that they got arranged in some random shapes which look like a quadrilateral but not a parallelogram and the reason for them not being a parallelogram is that although one pair of opposite side is parallel they are not equal in length which restricts other pair of opposite sides from being parallel friends do not get confused between parallel sides and equal sides okay in geometry, a quadrilateral whose only one pair of opposite side is parallel is known as trapezium. Some call it as trapezoid as well. These non-parallel sides may be equal like in our first diagram or may not be equal like in other two diagrams. Basically, there are only two types of trapezium. When these sides are equal, we call them isosceles trapezium. When they are not, they are simply called trapezium or we can say scalene trapezium. Here are some real life examples of trapezium. Since it is a bit different shape than that of a parallelogram, so even its properties will also differ. Like opposite angles will not be equal and Diagonals may be equal as in the first case, that is in isosceles trapezium, or may not be equal like in any other trapezium. In isosceles trapezium, adjacent angles made by non-parallel sides are equal. In any other trapezium, they are not. So this was all about trapezium family. Till now, We've learned about two families of quadrilaterals. If anyone asks you to recognize a shape belonging to these families, I hope you will be able to. Now, there is only one family left, the kite family. We've all seen a kite flying in the sky. In a kite, there are two main sticks, which helps in the kite flying. Friends, try to make the shape of a kite along with me with these Mikado stick and write whatever you observe. I've made three kites and all of them are a bit different from each other. See my first kite. All its sides are of equal length. Can we call it a rhombus which we have learned in our previous session? If all the sides are equal, they have to be parallel. So it becomes a rhombus, right? It could have been a square also, like my second kite, as it makes 90 degrees of angle at the corners. Simply, if we rotate or flip a rhombus or square, it looks like the shape of a kite only, right? My third kite is a very special one. We haven't seen such quadrilateral till now. It's both the pair of adjacent sides are equal. This is one of the criteria for a quadrilateral to be a kite. There is one more property which is only found in kite is that we can see its diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Precisely speaking, it's one of the diagonals is a perpendicular bisector of other. Now you must be thinking that the square 
and rhombus belong to the family of parallelogram because both their pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Yes, you are right. In a rhombus or square, since all the sides are equal, so no doubt even adjacent sides will be equal, as well as their diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Therefore, they belong to both the families because they satisfy all the tradition or you can say condition followed by respective families. So friends, this was all about the types of quadrilaterals. Any other shapes which do not belong to these three families are simply called quadrilateral only. Broadly, we can say that a parallelogram, trapezium and kite are the family name or surname. And the figures which come under these families have their different names. Rhombus and square are in a relation with two families, parallelogram and kite. All these families live in a town quadrilateral. This is it for now. Let's meet in the next session where we'll deal with areas of quadrilateral and some more properties on angles, sides, etc. For that, stay tuned to Let's Tute. If you have any queries regarding this session, then write it in the comment box and do subscribe to our channel. Keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.